Welcome to this overview of Project Server 2016. First, the good news, Project Server 2016 is coming soon. Project Professional 2016, Project Pro 2016 for Office 365 has been released. In this video, I will cover the benefits of using Project Server for Project Portfolio Management, and I will specifically highlight what is new in 2016. Why should you consider Project Server 2016? Well, the first reason it's got a new enhanced resource management capability, it's got enhanced business intelligence, and it is built on SharePoint 2016, the most recent release of this particular software. The overall benefits which I would like to review now so that you can keep them in mind as I go through the demonstration is Project Server centralizes an organization's project and resource data. It allows the team members to easily report progress on their assigned task. It allows other stakeholders to view overall status of active projects. It allows stakeholders to drill down into the particular schedules for more detail. Let me now show you Project Server 2016 with Project Professional 2016. This is the default home view of a Project Server 2016. The various options or selections are shown down the left hand side. As I mentioned, one of the benefits is, is that it allows you to see an overview of the projects that are part of Project Server. So to do that, I simply select the Project tab. And here I am now looking at a list of all of the projects in this uh, test instance of Project Server 2016. I can actually change the way the data is displayed because I have all of these views. So if I want to see the information by uh, the department that author authorized it, uh, here is the consulting department, the IT department. If I wanted to see it by owner, I can go back to the owner. When I get a individual schedule that I want to understand better, what I can do is simply click on the title because the titles are a hot link and now I am focused solely on the Contoso UK IT deployment. And again, what I have here is the ability to view uh, various uh, levels of detail. One of the interesting things and one of the powerful features is, is that I can create views that focus on specific types of tasks. So for example, I have a whole bunch of milestones in, this, in my schedule so I can look at a milestone view. And therefore what it has done is it has filtered out, removed from the display, they're still there, but removed from the display all of the tasks that are not milestones. The other thing that I can do when I am here is I can go down and look at the project site. A project site is where the project team keeps artifacts, documents, calendars, deliverables, risks, issues. All of this type of stuff can be maintained in the project site. So if I want to see the documents that are associated with this, you'll notice that I have a project budget and I have a diagram of the network. This particular schedule happens to be part of a program so I can see the program home and where I go up to the program home, I can see again the documents, the issues, the risks, the deliverables that are associated with the program. When I want to return back to the uh, beginning, I simply select projects and now I'm back looking at 
the projects. So a very powerful capability to allow you to see what is happening and then drill down into the schedule and beyond the schedule to drill down into the actual project site where the artifacts are being maintained. The second big powerful feature of Project Server is resource management. So for example, I can have work resources, but I can also have cost resources and material resources. And basically, if I want to see the material resources, I can simply select that. If I want to go back to the work resources, I do that. Now I want to show you this new feature in 2016 which is resource engagements using resource plans and to do that I've got a little schedule that I'm working on and basically I need to work and understand what is happening with three resources Adam, Amy and Carol. So I select Adam, Amy and Carol and I go over here to the capacity planning aspect of it and what I do is I get this resource utilization view and the first thing that's interesting is is that it's very graphically oriented but in terms of this little mythical scenario we're following you'll notice that Adam is currently not assigned to any projects so basically what we want to do is we want to show you what happens when we assign Adam to projects how it is going to be displayed here so that other people will all of a sudden understand not only what additional work Amy and Carol have but what new work Adam have. So basically we can go back to the resource center and then what we could do is we can pop over here to Project Professional 2016 and basically this is simply a little mythical schedule that I have created and what I've done is I have created a number of resources and we can view the resources and here are the resources and you'll notice that I've added Adam, Amy and Carol and now I can go to create a resource plan. At this particular point in time I don't want to assign resources to specific tasks I just want to have a general overall understanding of the work that the resources are going to do in this particular project. So basically what I do is I create a resource plan. And basically what I do is I can go down to Adam and I can go over to engagements. I can add an engagement and I can say that he's going to start on uh, May the 16th and we're going to need him for May, June, July, August and September and we expect to need him about 30% uh, of the time so I create an engagement for uh, Adam just to show you I can also add an engagement for Amy and again I simply define when I need Amy and let's say that I need Amy from the first of August to the end of September but in this particular case uh, I'm going to have Amy do uh, 90 five hours of work as opposed to working a certain percentage of time. I know based on experience that she can get all this work done in 95 hours and so therefore I do that and I'm currently not comfortable with doing anything with Carol so I leave Carol alone. Now what I do is you'll notice that I have to submit because these are still drafts I have to submit the engagements and I'm now submitting the engagements to Project Server and so what I'll do is I'll go back to Project Server I still have Adam, Amy and Carol but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the resource requests and here are the resource requests and here is a resource request for this uh, Contesso IT deployment for Adam and you'll notice that 
I'm now playing the role of a resource manager. I can go here to Adam and I can say I'll accept that and I can make a comment so that the project manager knows my feelings and I can say OK and basically I can do the same for Amy and I can go accept and basically when I now go to the capacity planning and I do that you will notice that it has changed because I have got uh, Adam, I've got Amy, and I've got Carol. So you'll notice that uh, I don't have uh, Carol on the uh, particular uh, schedule we were working on. I can actually focus on the resource plans by going up to again this very new very powerful feature called capacity engagements and heat map and therefore I can now see exactly what Adam is doing I can I, uh, see exactly what uh, Amy's doing and you'll notice that while Carol is on other resource plans she is not on this Contesso IT deployment just so that you understand and have an appreciation if I go back here and I say refresh you'll notice that the uh, fact that I have accepted the resource engagements the resources are now changed to committed so a very very powerful feature of project server 2016 is the ability to use resource engagements to create resource plans so that you don't have to go and put specific resource assignments on all of these tasks. You simply decide at a very high level based on your experience what the resources are going to do. If I go back to the uh, project server what we've done is we've looked at projects we've looked at resources we also have the ability to look at uh, tasks now in this case I'm looking at my tasks okay not the tasks of these other resources if I want to see the tasks of the other resources I use a resource capability but basically this is where I can go through and I can report my time on a task and report progress on the work that I am doing. This is the PWA project server reports business intelligent portion of project. Uh, in this particular example I only have English reports uh, and I only have a small sample but basically it will show you uh, the the power of BI in project server so for example I want to see graphically a representation of the budget assigned to the various projects by owner so basically I simply go here and I open it and it tells me that it has downloaded I can now edit it and you'll notice that it has opened up in Excel and here I have a list of the various projects here's the list at the bottom you'll notice that I'm focusing on the projects for Amy if I wanted to switch and look at the projects that were owned or being managed by Carol I could do that if I wanted to switch to Jan I could do that and lastly what I could do is I could clear the filter and therefore I would have a report that showed graphically the budget for all of the projects that are currently in project server now the important thing to remember is, is that these BI reports are built so they're customized for your organization to show your data the way you want it to be displayed.
So, very briefly, that was an overview of a project server. As I think the demonstration showed, project server has a number of benefits. First, it centralizes an organization's project and resource data. It allows team members to easily report progress on their assigned tasks. It allows other stakeholders to view the overall status of the active projects and it allows stakeholders to drill down into a schedule for more details. Why should you consider BMO? First of all, our experience. We have been hosting project since 2010. We offer the best of both worlds. We offer Project Server 2010, 2013, and 2016, as well as Microsoft Project Online along with Office 365. We are specialists in hybrid hosting with line of business integration. We have a BMO Project Server training pack. That is what I used for the demonstration. And it is used by many of our training partners to teach, train people on various aspects of Project Server. We have a number of options for organizations of any size. Two or three users to thousands of users. All regardless of the size, come with a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee and 24-7 support is always included at no extra cost when you have BMO provide your hosted project server. For more information, I would invite all of you to visit www.bmopro.com there you will find that there is a white paper on cloud-based PPM written by our president and co-founder. It's short, seven pages. It goes into what cloud-based PPM is and how Project Server addresses it. You will also find on our website a white paper on all of the new features in Project Server Project Professional. You can request a quote or you can request a demo of Project Server or Microsoft Project Online. Thank you very much.